Hi, Agent Recapped here. Today we are going to explain the episode 1 of a 2022 Japanese TV comedy, romance, supernatural, drama series called Tsuma, Shagakusei Nainaru. The first episode starts in their house, Nijimakesu making coffee while his wife Nijimataki is preparing their food for lunch. Keisuk loves taking pictures. Taki told her daughter, Nijima Mai to get ready because they are going to their farm. Later in the farm, they started harvesting their crops. Taki asked Keisuke to pull the weeds out and add fertilizers. Keisuke said, Mama, look at these red bell peppers. Taki approaches him and dares him to taste, knowing it isn't a bell pepper. Keisuke takes one and tasted it, then realizes it's too spicy to be a bell pepper. Taki laughs and told him that it's not a bell pepper, it's habanero. Keisuke immediately drinks some water. Before going home, they take a picture of them holding their harvested crops on their way home. Mai gets tired and fell asleep. Taki tells his wife that she has such a believable power to make everyone around her happy, and as long as they have her, they have nothing to worry about. Taki asks him, don't you have any certain purpose in life? Keisuke tells her that he'll follow her because she is the heroine of his life. Taki taps his forehead and asks to give her a full body massage later. Suddenly, a truck appears on the curved side of the road taking their lane resulting into crashing into their car. Ten years passed. Keisuke wakes up from his phone's alarm. He goes downstairs to prepare for work. He takes the trash with him on his way out. Mai is in her room playing video game. Taki passed away ten years ago. Since then, and Mai and her father have become zombies, living but not alive. One afternoon, while Keisuke is on his way home, a little girl overtakes him on the stairs, but then she stops and looks at him like she knows who he is, but Keisuke just ignored her. When he gets home, Mai goes downstairs and takes her food from what Keisuke bought for them. And without a word, she goes back to her room. When Keisuke is about to eat, the doorbell rings. He goes to the door to check. Looking at the monitor, he sees an elementary school student. Confused, he slowly opens the door and asks the little girl what brings her to their house. He opens the gate and the little girl said, I'm home. And then she immediately goes inside while Keisuke is telling her that this isn't her house. At the kitchen, the little girl tells him, I am not mistaken, this is my home, and admits that her name is Nijimitaki, her wife, and Mai's mother. Keisuke is confused. The little girl asks if Mai is upstairs, then rushes into her room. The little girl holds her face and says that she looks exactly like her when she was young. Then the little girl ran excitedly downstairs and checks her dead wife's portrait and complains, why did you pick the ugliest picture of me? The little girl told Keisuke that she was his wife who died 10 years ago. Keisuke and Mai looks confused of what is happening. The little girl tells them that she'll turn 10 in her next birthday and that she died 10 years ago. It seems that when she died, she was reborn in the child's body. The two couldn't understand what she is saying. The little girl says that her name was Nijimitaki. Mai tells her father that he should call the child's parents. Keisuke asks the child what is her name, and she replies that her name now is Shuriki Marika, fourth grader of Sakura Elementary School. She wonders what they've been eating since she's been gone. She tells him no matter how busy he's eating takeouts, he has to put it on a plate. Keisuke and his daughter were stunned. Marika notices the time and realizes that she needs to go home, so she quickly picked up her school bag. Before going home, Marika tells Keisuke that I thought there was an old man in the house. Keisuke was surprised on how the little girl talks and carries a plate. Food habits, just like her mother. The next morning while Keisuke and Mai were out, Marika comes back to their house. Nobody is answering and found out that the gate was unlocked. She expertly took the spare key from under the flower pot and she opened the door. She goes into the storage closet and finds her secret hidden money. She picked up the photo album, looking at the pictures of her daughter growing up year after year. It's full of memories. After her daughter's 10th birthday, the photo album goes blank. It looks like Keisuke and her daughter have been lonely and stopped living since her own death. They haven't been able to get over it. Marika immediately calls Keisuke telling him that she is his wife and she needs to meet him at their usual place. Keisuke is confused so he ignored her. He rides a bus on his way home and memories of her wife flashes back. Later, he saw Marika waiting at their usual place waving at him. After that, she led him to the supermarket and says in a loud voice that she is his wife. Passersby cast strange glances at them. They bought a cell phone for Marika and she downloaded an app then she scans his QR code. From then on, every day, in the morning, Marika sends good morning texts and cheer up messages to Keisuke. One time, Marika finds Mai in a coffee shop nearby. She asked her daughter like an adult if she has found a job or does she have a boyfriend. 
She learned that her daughter did go out for a long time. Marika bragged that when she was her age, she was a predatory girl. The daughter was stunned, thinking that how can a 10-year-old say such things? So, she concludes that the little girl is not some psychopath. Mai tells Marika that there are things that she should and shouldn't do. She also tells her don't ever show up again, then she left. On the other hand, Keisuke's boss tells him that he can go home. He goes into a diner feeling sad. Suddenly, Marika passes by him. She scolds him on why he leaves his work so early and tells him that it's not very ambitious. Looking at Keisuke's unhappy face makes her sad. She held his face and tells him that even though he keeps looking down all the time, he won't find anything good down there and he should pull himself together. The next morning, Marika knocked on their door. He tells her that she shouldn't keep coming on their house whenever she wants, and he mentions that he will have visitors coming. The two ended up cleaning their yard that hasn't been cleaned in 10 years. It is now clean and tidy under the supervision of Marika. She helps him prepare food for the coming visitors. Suddenly, good memories came flashing back in an instant. Mai saw such a scene. Angered, she rushed to Marika, telling her that this is her mother's kitchen and she shouldn't touch anything. She couldn't believe that her mother is back and become a child. The night arrives and their friends came to Keisuke's house to attend his wife's annual memorial service. Keisuke gave his thanks to his friends for attending his wife's memorial service for a decade. He tells them that he is going to sell his house to put an end to his memories and start a new life. Marika, hiding nearby, was surprised to hear this. When the visitors left, Keisuke tells her that the house was bought by her wife, kitchen tiles, the porch lamp was carefully selected by her. He left everything untouched after his wife died. His wife loves coffee. He tells Marika that when his wife is teaching him the recipe, he used to write the recipe down carefully and that they also made charts of it. While talking, Keisuke looked silly and laughed. He wanted Marika to stop coming to his house. After all, 10 years is supposed to be a fresh start. After Marika heard all of these, he said that his skills have deteriorated a lot, then quietly leaves. One day, Keisuke received a food delivery. When he opens it, it was his wife's dish. She always makes it for him. He picked up the lunchbox and tasted it. Instant hot dog and the spicy flavor is his wife's own recipe. He remembers the time when he was stuck working overtime. His wife will fetch him a midnight snack for his man to perk up. She named the dish habanero meatball. The couple grew the bell pepper themselves. The familiar smell made Keisuke cry. Meanwhile, Mai also received a food delivery. When she opens the box, a birthday cake with cookies numbered from 11 to 20 years old are covered with mother's love. She hasn't had a birthday since her mom died. Keisuk and his daughter ran as fast as they could to the school, realizing that she is really Nijimitaki. Marika tells them her memories with them from the past. Ten years of separation. What a way to bring a family together. Back at home. Marika gave orders around the house just like before. Keisuke was as happy as a child. Bataki was not satisfied and tells him it's a miracle I remember my past life. But when I passed away, you need to pick yourself up and move on. Mai held her mother's hand and tells her like a child that you were my mother. Welcome back, mom. One afternoon, Keisuke fetched Marika home using his bike. On the road, a police stops them and tells them that they cannot be riding a bike like they're a couple. Keisuke tells the police that they are husband and wife. Marika taps his forehead, and they left immediately. The family rallied. Mai began to look for work. The two cooks their own food from now on, and does not rely on takeouts anymore. One day, Marika made a bento box for Keisuke to cheer him up, which makes Marika's mother suspicious. Wondering what their kid is doing so she followed her child. They meet at the road. Marika gave the bento box she made for Keisuke. The first episode ends with Keisuke proposing to an elementary student, Marika. If you liked the video, please subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Until next video, bye bye.